Hi, at last it's time to take DDD off the bench and make it mobile. So I'm going to drive DDD around like a rather expensive remote control car. I'm going to use a PlayStation DualShock 4 as a controller. I have loads of these lying around from my gaming habit. So connecting them up to drive the ROS2 twist message was quite easy. The video is really going to be about how my Pico is interpreting the twist message in order to drive DDD. Then we can reuse standard packages and some excellent community code to connect the DualShock 4 to my Raspberry Pi 4. I talk at the end of the video about my plans for calibration. Is DDD really following its twist messages accurately? Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out more about my thoughts on this. Perhaps you have suggested approaches you have used. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Just a quick recap on DDD. DDD is a three-wheeled robot for the purposes of experimentation with robotics and ROS2 using the Pico and Raspberry Pi 4. DDD is driven by two 12 volt motors on the front two wheels. A dual H-bridge drives the motors and rotary encoders measure the speed. Speed management is handled by the Pico. Higher level ROS2 functions such as mapping, navigation, and in this video connecting to the DualShock 4 are handled by the Raspberry Pi 4. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay are a great partner for any maker, able to manufacture PCB boards, undertake 3D printing or CNC builds, as well as sheet metal fabrication and injection molding. The service is required for any droid building project. PCBWay also hosts pages on makers' projects, so why not check out what other makers are building? The message ROS2 uses in order to move a robot around is called a twist, and twist is really, for my mind, all about propulsion. Uh, how we're going to move the robot, at what speed and in what direction. The twist message might originate from a controller, as we're doing in this experiment, where I'm going to do it from a DualShock 4 or it could come up from the navigation stack, actually own brain of the robot telling it how to get from A to B. So the twist message includes two parts. It includes a linear part and an angular part. The linear part is quite simply the direction we're gonna move in. So uh, moving forward along the X axis or moving to the right or left along the Y axis. Um, we can also, of course, go along the z-axis and move up. That's really what the linear side is. It's moving straight in a direction along each of those axes. So DDD actually can only move in the x-axis. Um, it can turn. we come to that in a minute because that's all about angular. But actually, really, in terms of direct linear motion, it can only go forward and backwards. So that's only x-axis. So in the twist message, we're going to ignore the Y and the Z value for linear. The linear values are measured in meters per second. The angular side is around rotation and rotation around each of our four axes, X, Y and Z. Sometimes these are called pitch, yaw and roll. Now, our poor little DDD is actually a little bit limited. It can only rotate around the z-axis. Um, it can't uh, do any pitch or yaw uh, around the x and y-axis. It hasn't got that capability. It can only rotate around the z-axis. And that rotation is measured in radians per second. So how do we interpret that twist message and make DDD actually move? Well, let's just have a look at how the twist message is going to relate to DDD and the bit that we can move, its wheels. Well, from a linear point of view, this is fairly straightforward. Um, if we have x as 1, so 1 meter per second, then we can work out what speed we need to turn those wheels at. We know the radius of the wheels, therefore I know the circumference of the wheels. Therefore we can calculate the conversion from meters per second to radians per second and instruct both wheels, left and right, to rotate at that speed. That should end up with linear motion. It's a little bit more difficult when we come to angular. Now the first thing to say about angular is 
if you know we've got an angular rotation of pi over 2 so that's a 90 degrees uh, in old degrees terms uh, rotation and we've got no linear then actually ddd isn't going anywhere it can't actually rotate on its own it's got to have a linear propulsion to be able to do any angular motion at all so let's pretend it's got a linear uh, x value of one meter per second and that pi over two rotation well then ddd is going to rotate 90 degrees following a nice circular arc and the angle that ddd will be at at the end of that one second will actually be um, pi over two and so we know the rotation we know what's going on so what does that mean for uh, ddd well ddd needs to follow a nice uh, track and go do that nice um, circular arc uh, as it goes around which means that the outside wheel is going to travel quite a lot further than the inside wheel so what are the calculations well the things we know we know what the angle is that ddd will be at at the end of that and therefore we we know the uh, circumference uh, or the distance x that um, our ddd is going to travel which is the circumference of an arc therefore we can calculate the total circumference of um, the circle that ddd is traveling on and therefore what the radius of that circle would be then we can plot the left wheel and the right wheel onto that and calculate what their radius is because we know um, the size of the axle on DDD. So if we know those um, circle circumferences and therefore the circumference of the arc that the left wheel and the right wheel will go on, we can use that to calculate the speed of the left wheel and the right wheel, just as we did with the X linear coordinates. We've just got a slightly different uh, value for both wheels. That should get us on a nice circular rotation for DDD. All the source code for today's experiment is in my repository on GitHub and it's in the Project 5 Twist. The software stack for the Pico is of course based on C++ and I'm using the MicroRos library and I'm also using FreeRTOS. Over in VS Code we can see my DDD EXP repo and this new Project 5 Twist. Now this isn't significantly different from what we had last time. There really is only one additional class in here, DDD. And DDD is a um, agent, it's going to be a, a free RTOS task for me, and it's implementing my micro ROS entities. So it's going to be running uh, nodes for the micro ROS world that are going to be a, taking those twist messages and handling it. It's going to be a wrapper around our previous MicroRos entities, um, motor agents, and it's going to do some pass through to make sure that um, motor agents still is able to publish those joint state messages that we had last time and anything else I need it to, to do. The rest of this is really around um, management of a MicroRos entities world. So it's the creating, destroying entities, handling, the uh, messages, etc., uh, making sure we've got an executor, handling those uh, twist messages arriving, etc. There is some work over here I will admit towards calculating um, odometry and the position of um, DDD. Don't worry about that, I will talk through that in a later video. Today we're really going to just talk about the twist messages and uh, how I'm handling those. So over in the C++ code for DDD and C++ file for DDD, um, really setup's pretty simple. Um, I will mention a couple of things here. So in our run method, so this is the FreeRTOS task that is running consistently for DDD um, class, I'm actually doing a little bit of checking around time. When did we last see a twist message? If we've not seen a twist message for a while, it might mean that Bluetooth dropped out and we're getting no messages, at which point I could quite like the robot to stop rather than continuing driving off into the distance. So there is a bit of a stop here to say, if you haven't heard a message for a second, I think I said it to a second, uh, stop, all motors stop, robot comes to a complete grinding halt. Um, I think that's quite important. 
to put in there as a safety feature. So we got a bit, setting up the twist messages is very simple. It's um, just a single call into the RCL library, easy enough. Um, create entities, we of course need a subscriber for our twist message and we're setting up a subscriber here and it's going to listen to the topic DDD command velocity. And we will also need to add it as an executor so that um, it will actually get those messages and provide the callback to allow us when our twist message happens. So we will see that. And we'll see that in this handle subscription message here. So if it is a twist message and we'll check the context to make sure it is, then um, one of the first things I'm going to do is update my timestamp on the last time I saw a twist message. So, you know, that's how that's keeping updated and that's how we're doing that auto stop. If I'll check to see if um, we're actually got a linear value of zero, if we have, then we're definitely stopped. So shut all, all motors down and let's do a stop. If it's, um, if the angular is Z, but X isn't zero, then we've got a linear motion. So I'm going to do a conversion here between that uh, linear version, uh, linear uh, propulsion in meters per second into revolutions per second for my motors. Uh, if that comes out negative, then actually we're going backwards. So I will just change the direction of my um, CW field um, of Boolean and uh, put it to positive because um, I actually set my motors so that they, they only go in positive directions. If you want them to go backwards, you change the Boolean value for clockwise or counterclockwise. So that's how I set up uh, linear. That's really simple. Let's have a look at Angular, which is a little bit more complicated. But really, this is just going through the same calculations we I talked through. So we're working out what the arc is for both the left and the right wheel. Um, once I've got those arc for the right wheel, um, I can then convert those uh, distances into revolutions per second for the two wheels. And then I can uh, go through and set the wheels and their speeds. I need four conditions for that, depending on whether you're going forwards le um, and left, forwards and right, etc., backwards, left, backwards, right. And those are the four conditions there. Um, that's, I got a little bit wrong with my uh, logic when I originally wrote this and testing using the DS4 controller proved that actually I got it wrong and needed to do some little tweaks here. But that's what we do testing for, right? Over in main, things are pretty much the same as they were. The only difference really here is around uh, setting up DDD and wrapping it around the motor. It's all pretty much the same otherwise. Let's have a look at the demo. So for this demo and for this experiment, I'm going to use a DualShock 4 to drive a DDD around. Now that isn't the end goal. It's not really building here a remote control car. I actually want navigation and a lot of other capabilities on DDD. That's really where we're going. But I want to make sure that twist messages are being interpreted correctly by the robot and that everything seems to work. So I want to back this into a standard ROS2 um, capability and just make sure it, it really does work and that I've just not in, interpreted things incorrectly. So I'm going to use the standard ROS2 package Telot Twist Joy and follow uh, a great tutorial that I will link in the description from Aditya. I uh, hope I pronounced your name reasonably well. I've used that tutorial to um, give me a uh, twist capability by adding a node, the ACROS2 node into uh, a ROS2 project. Um, that's using ACT, um, ACROS2 messages as well. So I've created a ROS2 workspace with those two packages in it from Aditya, and I'm using that to drive uh, DDD. I've had to do a little bit of tweaking to the PlayStation 4 twist config. So the linear axis is going to be um, my X axis and it's the controller one, which is the left joystick. And it's only going to take a notice of that going up or down, so only X. And I've got a scaled version of that, which basically means that the fastest I can set uh, DDD to run at is 0.4 meters per second, 
which is sort of safe for moving him around the house. Um, my drone skills um, are proving not that great, so let's keep him nice and slow. The your axis, well, that is uh, control three, which is the right hand joystick. Um, in the standard one uh, I downloaded, uh, your was set to something else and it didn't seem to be working. I think it should be three. And I've set the angle, maximum angle for that as 1.57. So um, that's basically a 90 degree. And, and that's it. That's all I needed to set up. And then actually I could run this up. So let's just have a quick test of the controller. And we can see here that as I'm pushing forward, we're getting forward rotation from those motors, uh, backwards and uh, left and right. And the wheels seem to be responding pretty well. So time to get him off the desk and onto the floor, I think. So I've brought DDD outside for a little bit of a run around. I've got a little bit more space, so I'm less likely to crash into walls and furniture and uh, test out my driving skills. And it, he goes pretty well in both forwards and backwards. Um, got a slight problem with that wheel clipping into some of the cables which are hanging down from him a little bit. Um, but that's just, you know, trial and error stuff and it all can be sorted out. But generally, it's controllable. It goes where I'm pointing my DS4 controller, which is exactly what we want to see. So there we go. DDD is live in action and can move. It was good fun to get DDD off the desk and test it moving around. I learned a lot about how it behaves through this process. I was able to fix a few bugs, like turning in different directions when going forward and backwards. Oops certainly worth doing these tests. What I've not done yet is any calibration. Is DDD traveling at the commanded speed? Is DDD turning to the commanded angle? I can start putting rulers on the floor and doing measurements, but that is quite tricky to get accurate. I don't want human error to impact my calibration too much. So my plan is to start adding location sensors to DDD and using the readings for calibration. This will be some HCSRO4 ultrasound distance sensors and a LiDAR unit. Stay subscribed to see how I get on. Thank you very much for watching. Please like the video as it helps other people find it. Please subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss the next video. Goodbye for now.